Can you really spend your way to safety? Welcome back, friends. Happy Monday. I hope you're all doing well. So I read a story a couple of weeks ago about a new piece of technology that is going to allegedly increase bicycle and pedestrian safety. And this got me thinking about safety in the bicycle business just in general. You know, when I started working in bike shops, helmets weren't even really a thing. I mean, if you went into a bike shop, there'd maybe a half a dozen of them stacked on the floor in a corner somewhere. Now, of course, you go into a bike shop and they take up an entire wall. You know, we had wonderful uh, products like the skid lid, which was gross. And then a lot of you, I'm sure, remember this, the venerable Bell V1 Pro, awful. But then in about 1989, Giro came out with the ProLite. And this was really the first helmet that a lot of us would consider wearing. And from there, helmets just kept progressing. They made them lighter. They, more importantly, added ventilation while maintaining or even sometimes increasing uh, the amount of protection afforded to you. But a curious thing happened after that. And that was whenever you would relate a story about someone uh, being involved in a, a crash with another cyclist or on their own or worse yet being hit by a car, although that rarely happened back then, what was the first question asked? Were they wearing a helmet? As if that was the magic bullet that was going to save everyone, which of course is untrue. And then things, you know, went quiet for quite a while. And I don't know, what was it, a decade ago, maybe? You started seeing uh, advertisements for cameras, front and or rear facing cameras for your bicycle. So you could ID the car that ran you off the road. It did not, uh, it was not a good omen, let's say, for things to come. This new technology is for bicycles and for automobiles, and it's, uh, for bicycles, it would be car sensing, and for automobiles, it would be bicycle and or pedestrian sensing. Well, that's all fine and well. I don't know that drivers need yet another thing to concentrate on other than the road. But for bicycles, I don't, I guess I don't understand. Here's a picture of the road across from where I live. This is the road that I would likely have to ride on were I to ride to the store. That little unmarked strip of asphalt is allegedly a bike lane with a 55 mile an hour speed limit. If I had that technology and there was a car coming, what am I supposed to do? Where am I gonna go? other than in the ditch where I could maybe make friends with an alligator. This brings me to Peter McKinnon. Stay with me. Peter is a photographer and a YouTuber, and I subscribe to him on many platforms, including this one. This is a great opportunity for me to say, if you've hung in with me this long and you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button. Well, he posed a question on Twitter the other day. And the question was, on its surface, 
not inflammatory or antagonistic, I understood the thrust of the question. It is worth mentioning that the tweet in question did involve cyclists. Uh, specifically, I think a group of cyclists that he encountered on the road. And I want to start out by saying this is not, I don't, I'm not here to dunk on Peter McKinnon. In fact, Peter, if you ever see this, I doubt you will, but if you ever do, reach out to me because I don't want to talk to you about bicycles. I want to send you a bag of coffee. You love coffee. I love coffee. I want to send you a bag of Tinker Coffee uh, just as a thank you for the value that I've gotten from your channel. The absolute crap tornado that came out of this tweet. Um, well, it shouldn't be a surprise. Twitter can be a real garbage fire. Um, Chris, where are you going with all this? Well, where I'm going is up until a couple days ago, my solution for bicycle safety was cities and counties need to lower speed limits and enforce the law. And I think I've changed my mind to some extent because I don't think anything is gonna change regardless of the laws and regardless of the technological wizardry that people come up with until we start treating each other better. If we can't be kind to people that annoy us or temporarily inconvenience us, you can have all the technology and laws in the world and nothing's ever gonna change. With that, I hope something good happens to you today. Until next time, be nice, work hard, ride bikes, play music when you can. I'll talk to you soon. I love you, Pete.